at the start. Hey everyone, I'm Chesh from Chesh Breaks, and I'm here with my lovely friend Sam. Sam, how are you doing? Yeah, pretty good, Chesh, still. Oh, not too bad, feeling a bit of deja vu. And of course, we've got a special friend here, Card Shark. Card Shark, how are you doing, Sharky boy? I am great, and how are you guys? <laughs> I feel like we've done this all before. What an odd yeah, sensation. I feel like there's a movie about this. <laughs> uh, Inception? <laughs> Uh, okay. Deja vu. There's many. There's hey. many. There's <laughs> many. Been, yeah. I would have gone with Inception because it's that like no one knows if it's real or not. You know, or maybe The Matrix. We could all be in a simulation, oh, although yeah. that's highly doubtful. Don't be one of those as people. I was, <laughs> as I was saying to you before, Shutter Island was one we watched recently again, and it was like that's the whole like yeah, what is actually real and what is what people are telling you. Mm. So, so as, as people might not know, uh, we started recording and some reason uh, the crew wasn't unmuted, which I looked over and noticed that there was no bars going and went, well, that's a panic situation. <laughs> just talking to himself. Yeah, just talking to myself randomly again, like usual. So, oh, Sharky, <laughs> you were saying that you bought a box of Optic came in the mail today. Did you crack anything good uh, out of it? Um... Mainly those ones that I put up on that auction that you saw earlier. They were the they were the best hits. I mean, I got a jar in my house. Oh yeah, that's right. But, I mean, I bought one earlier in the week. But the good <laughs> thing is that the one I've, that's up for auction is double is has doubled what I paid for mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, you know, I'm not, I'm not too upset about that. You can't, yeah, you can't complain. Like, um, I, this is, I'm, this is why I'm waiting for yeah. my proper mail time, which is unfortunately going to miss this mail time, and I don't know if I'm going to still have it by next mail time. Um, which is that uh, cherry and so Jamarant oh, yeah. base card, the prism yeah. card, and I'm like, that was yeah, a good break. I, 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 on one hand, I want to keep it and I want to grade it. On the other hand, I could sell it, and it alone could pay for a full Chronicles Blaster box. And I'm like, oh, I can. Uh, I, I, I can, but yeah, yeah. not at the price yeah. that I would normally be willing to pay. <laughs> well, the, I, I saw, like, the cheapest ones I saw today were 155 and 190 Yep. <clears throat> yep. For Hanger and... um. Hanger and the box. Yeah. Um, so I can get three blasters from a place and it'll be like five seventy. The if I sell the Jaramarant, that's two hundred. Um if I sell like this Tim of the Weaver or whatever else I've got laying around, I can probably raise you know, <laughs> I, at least up. half half the cost and then like I can afford the rest of it anyway. So it's 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 real tempting as much as, and there's a couple of things we're going to cover here tonight while we're, while we're talking, while we're doing mail time. Um, yeah. Chronicles is in, hmm, I want to say huge demand at the moment, but also it's, and it, it's almost like an ancillary product. Um, and there's a lot of it around. There's a lot of it around. Yeah. The problem is the price isn't coming from Panini and from most of the card shops, as was as as myself and Sharky found out last night. Um, the price is coming from resellers and retailers, not not really like wanting to make money. Let's let's be honest, yeah, and that's fine. Exactly. Like yeah. if you're a store and you want to make money, I'm not going to bitch and complain at you I, that you've jacked uh, up your prices three hundred percent. I'm I'm all for like if it's a store. And they've they're charging extra. Like I get that, I understand. Yeah. Because like because you're, you're store, trying to keep up with re resellers, but you're also people, undercutting those resellers so that you can make a little bit of scratch, yeah. and that's cool. It's the people like you know, for example, if you were to buy, you know, how you said you could get the three for five seventy, mm -hmm. but you were going to charge an extra. So you you personally were going if you got it, you were going to charge eight hundred for the three. To that's be honest, when starts, <laughs> that's when it starts. To, yeah, but that's when it starts to get ridiculous, you yeah. know. And that that's when you you're not really doing it for the right reasons. Exactly. Yeah. If I wasn't going to open them and enjoy them, which is absolutely what I would do, 
then I would consider opening two of them for value and then selling off the third one for like 200 bucks, right? Because you're paying less than 600 bucks for three, then you're selling one of them off. So you've only like paid, you know, less, less than 400 bucks for two. So you're actually making money on, th- on that, on that third one. You're actually making some, you're recouping some of your costs back. Right. Mm. So like you, you basically down $350 instead of $400 and buying two. And that, that is absolutely something I'm not going to complain about somebody doing, but, and here's the caveat, but if you're going to do that, you have to make sure you're you're okay with you doing that because if you're anything like me and you complain about the resellers, even though there's nothing you can do about it, for you yourself to become a reseller, which is what you're doing, you really need to consider, you know, are you living long enough to become the hero or are you living long enough to become the villain? Like, oh God, you just made a Shutter Island reference again. Yeah, yeah, well, I can't help it. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, no, totally, totally. I know what you mean, and it's, um, yeah, no, go for it. No, I was like, I, it's one of those things where you, you, even in my position, I consider it like, and I go, well, I could open two, and I could leave one unopened, because I know in a couple of months when the product becomes semi-scarce, if it does, oh, wow. like, take yeah. that gamble and then sell it off for 300 but again, like I would prefer to get content for this channel, even if I cut it up into three videos and I open, you know, one a week um, and, and do it that way, which I'd want to open them all together, to be honest, just because, you know, mm. volatility of the product, the product is currently new. The prices are already falling because everyone's opening it. The, the jars that are coming out of there are falling in price. Um, Zion being knocked out of the bubble and having not a great game has, you know, knocking those particular cards down. None of the cards are true rookie cards, which we will absolutely discuss, uh, which is a good point. Yeah, Yeah, a good point that Cherry was talking about because somebody had asked them the question um, about the the Shaq Stadium Club tops card and whether it was a true rookie. Um, Mm. Guys, it's an insert. It's not a real fucking rookie. Anyway, um, (laughs) But yeah, like it's that thing of like, do you want to be the villain or do you want to do the, do the, what you intended for that product? Like you, you intended to buy that product because you wanted to enjoy that product. And that, that's what makes me steaming mad is that a lot of the people who are going out to the targets and the Walmarts in the U S and buying up all the stock don't give a shit about basketball. They're sneaker kids. Um, we, we sorry, Sharky. For using that term, because no, 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 <laughs> you, you know where no, I'm going I, with I, that. <laughs> I can, I like I was talking to you today, like I about it. I completely understand it, and you know, it's taken me four years to be able to get a pair of Kanye West shoes at retail. Mm-hmm. You know, sneaker four, game is something I've been out of for ages, but yeah, that's fascinating. Well, four so many years it's taken for me to be able to finally get a pair. Somebody was telling me that the Jordans that I essentially like exercised walked in and ruined. Like, oh no, <laughs> yeah. I, so, a couple of years ago, I bought a pair of Jordans, fresh, brand new Jordans. Um, and I was like, oh, these are great. And I was like, oh, they're limited edition black and gold. This is pretty cool. The, the red and yeah. black ones with the gold trim. Um, and I think yeah. I bought them for 300 bucks because they're on special. <laughs> and somebody was like, they they saw me like walking around in the in the Jordans were like, holy shit, where did you get those? I'm like, oh, yeah. I bought them like two years ago. I'm like I actually have to like buy new shoes, and this was like about six months ago. Yeah. And he looked down and he's like, well, why? And I showed him the bottom because I walk really heavy on my feet. Um, and he was like, wow, you really ruined those. Do you know how much they're worth? Because I didn't. I didn't know about the sneaky kid thing. Like I, all I knew is like, here's these really cool Jordan basketball shoes that I wanted when I was a kid. And here's this re-release amped up version and damn, they look pretty. And Oh, I can afford this. I'm going to buy myself a pair. Like I couldn't, when I was a kid, I had Larry Johnson's when I was a kid, you know? Oh man, that was my first Jersey. Exactly. Larry's were my first basketball shoes. And I, uh, second actually, because my first were, yeah, my first were, um, my first were oh normal cons actually, um, but yeah, my Johnsons were the the, the special uh, gel ones. 
Oh, like the, do you mean the pumps or the? No, no. These were the the inside special activate active gel. Ick. But uh, I came down from a dunk on my I think it was my right foot on my heel was too heavy and actually burst the uh, the gel pack. <laughs> did it did a Zion through the shoe? Yeah. <laughs> Just absolutely just blew it out, just ruined it like a tire. Uh, let's get into mail time, then we'll talk about the rookie thing. Um, so, before anyone asks, this isn't cashews. Oh, no, I, mean, I was like, yeah, is it Red Rock Deli or is it like. No, and you're about to see There's why like, I'm so angry. Like, why I'm so very angry about this. Um, I was trying to figure out what cashews come in a box, but yeah, you'll, you'll enlighten us in a second. So this is not the way to package your cards <laughs> with no top loader at all. No protection. Frustrating. Build your own top loader. Yeah. So this <laughs> is uh, a... Exactly. Like, okay, exactly. Like I said, I had almost admired the ingenuity, but like, yeah, it's, the point stands. It's not going to protect the card. Yeah, so this is a, a pink rookie mosaic uh, and a plain rookie mosaic with no top loader. Now, luckily, there was some minimal damage on the actual base uh, mosaic on the corners. Um, there was nothing on the prism. The prism somehow survived the, the most pink mosaic, I should say. Um, but Thank yeah, you, like man. just flimsy, flimsy sleeve. Wrapped in cardboard, quite literally, like make your own freaking top loader. Don't do that mm. ever. Don't. Yeah. And and people don't realize why, and that's because when you close this down on a card, that's not protecting the card how you think it is. A top loader won't actually crimp your card edges. It won't destroy your card edges because the space is literally designed for a card to fit in. I not not around. stupid cardboard. Anyway, that person got negative feedback on eBay, as did this person. Do you remember what I said about the uh, the ten Carson Edwards uh, hoops rookies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is them. They arrived in a to in a, a bubble mailer with bulk encasing them. Yes. Now the problem with this is this bulk moves, and and, and when bulk moves, there's potential it's going to destroy the corners on your cards. Now, mm. luckily with this it hasn't. Um, but I tell you what, and I don't think we got anything good. Malcolm Delaney, Ike, uh, Demar Carroll, Taris. Uh, yeah, so, more just jank, bulk, crap. So, this is the first five. And, um, oh, that's fine. And I wonder if I remember if I put the other... Hmm. You get some Morse code out of your microphone there, um, Sharky. You getting that too, Shesh? I am. Yeah. Oh, me. Yep. Yeah, it's like beeping. It's like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, it's probably like microphone is too close to another source, another electrical oh, source. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, I'm sitting on my bed. Sounds like dial-up. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I think I've got enough NBA hoops, Carson Edward rookies now. Yeah, I think you've shorted the system there. Yeah, I, I think I think I'll just, like, stop, maybe. I've got yeah. some Carson Edwards um, coming for you as well. Yes, you do. Uh, I'm going to take this bulk because I don't want you to see the card underneath this again. I'm still <clears throat> still waiting on one more to come. Yeah, that's fine. The Revolution one. So this was from Universal Collectibles. Uh, this was a break that I did with them. Um, I, to be honest, I didn't get anything good. Uh, and they actually popped something in here for me just as a throw-in, which was really nice because... I think, as everyone already knows, uh, I, I'm i not a fan of coming away from a break with next to nothing. I think that, like, you should get something with every break, and eventually when card prices calm down, or at least when box prices do, and if I end up getting into breaks uh, one way or another, I'm going to make sure everyone gets something. <laughs> so chucked in Alonzo Ball, 
Never complain about a, a base Lonzo. Uh, yeah, this is what I got from the break. Uh, Danilo Gallinari. Gallinari, man. Like, Gallinari. Sure, you're, you're great. But actually <laughs> threw in this for me because it was like, I mean, I know that you love Celtics, so I threw this and I was like, oh, dude, you did not have to. Yay. So, yeah, Romeo. Yep. Uh, Romeo, so like, you know, I will absolutely take this as consolation because I think Romeo's putting up some great numbers. Um, and yeah, I think well. all three of those Boston rookies are, are going to look strong uh, coming uh, into like the yeah. final season. That's what we were saying before. It's like they're actually, I mean, Grant and Romeo are getting some minutes, which is nice. And, mm -hmm. you know, Carson's next, I guess. But that even shows like they're a good team and they don't hold, they're going to give the, the rookies time. And I think they actually do. They're the type of team that is built on a little bit of culture and, you know, do care about, you know, cultivating that kind of stuff, which is good. Yeah. Well, if you go into my auction, there's a Romeo Langford rookie patch, rookie hey. ticket patch on there. And the bid is only two dollars at the moment, so you could pick yourself up a cheap card. You'll you'll have to send me a link for sure. Yeah. Bro, if I send is you a picture of some cards, do you think you can do what they're worth? This is what like, I'm getting from like friends now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, sure can. I'll tag you in it. Anyway. Yeah, tag me in it for sure. I think I put up a Langford rookie card as well. Yeah, I did. Same one, same Court Kings level mm -hmm. one. I'm mm not. -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is that one of the, uh, the Facebook auction uh, groups? Yes. Yeah, the one. I, yeah, I chucked it up in um, NBA Card Market Australia. Oh, nice, nice. And that's right. been good. Like you've been um, getting some good attention. Uh, I mean, this is my first auction. Mm. So, like to me, it's like if I can get something for it, it's better than like these are cards that I don't want anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like I could get more. If I was willing to put in the work yeah. to go through and price it, but at the same time, like you know, like for example, like that jar one, you know, just in my house, it's up to mm. twenty twenty one dollars at the moment plus postage twenty five. You're kind you know, of letting like, the audience do the um the value dictating, which is kind of nice. Yeah, and you know, like uh, I'm getting something. Your, you your know? floor on it, yeah. I think that's like your floor and expectation for those ones isn't like. You know, yeah. Anything. So that's the important, thing. and then it's just fun. So yeah. Oh, I like I do the same thing. Like I look at the auctions and try and sneak in and get some good cars for cheap prices. I, yeah. I find it more fun. I f it's like a it's like a full time break, you know. Yeah, exactly. You just scroll through and get what you want if you're quick enough. Shabazz Napier plays for the Blazers. I actually had no idea. Yeah. Well, that's not the reason I'm holding this up. I'm waiting for the conversation sorry, so I can. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's only like, come on, come on. Back to back to the back to the captain. Yeah. Take us to the promised land, Captain uh, Chesh. Yeah, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Um, so bags? this no, is a Darren Fox, uh, Darren Fox, uh, rookie revolution Astro? card. Um, yeah, it is an Astro, Astro. and I, I picked this up Astro. two for I think they were twelve fifty each. <laughs> And I was not um, gonna pass that down at all. Yeah, I bought a. I got Jackson Hayes oh, Astro. Yeah, that's a good looking card. Yeah, and Swiper is is he's legit too. Like he's such a um exciting point guard, and I think that's another the factor. It's like the the players that are a bit more exciting too. The way they get their work done, you know, they get their stats, and you know, Aaron Fox is amazing. Now, one of the things that I want to point out specifically with the seller. Um, is this seller did the right thing? So we've got hey. two medium price cards in a team bag, both in their own top loaders, uh, both in sleeves. So yes. now, Chet, is it cool to use your uh, existing uh, team bags? Yes, I think it's great. I think it's it's, yep. a, it's a good recycling um, exercise and that kind of thing. As long as they're clean, oh. recycle, recycle, recycle. Yeah, I, I keep I cut up the um, I cut up the padded envelopes and keep all the cardboard inserts. Nice. Just so then when I go down the post office, it's already in the little package, basically, and I just gotta. What is happening with your mic tonight? <laughs> I don't know. It's taking to the shadow <laughs> realm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just thought that this was like. You know, it wasn't too risky an investment. Like, they're Astros, so they're parallels. 
you know, uh, which actually brings us to something that Cherry Collectibles brought up. Um, what is a true rookie card? Um, specifically yeah, yeah. because a lot of people seem to be uh, under the impression that even like when it goes back to the Shaq era that, you know, Shaq's inserts during his rookie year were still rookie cards. And it's like, no, no. See, they are inserts. A, uh, the definition of a rookie card has always been the first appearance in a base set for a base card for that particular rookie. I mean, not to say that that card still can't hold some sentimental value if it's a cool insert or whatever, but the true one you're after is that base set one. And, you know, I've learned that recently, like Far Out Prism is an insane set, you know? Like oh, it's... Prism's just nuts. Yeah. And, and like, I've got, I've got Draymond Autos that I'm moving for cheaper than the Prism rookie. It's like... Wow, like it's amazing. Yeah, prism, prism at the moment it's just like obviously just going a bit, a bit nuts. It's just going a bit nuts. Um, but the big boy league. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. going back to like previous, so Beckett, the definition from Beckett, the from the original grading source, the original pricing source is exactly that. It's the first appearance of a player in a base set their base card would be considered a rookie card um inserts etc would not be considered a true rookie card because yes it's from their rookie year and that's why like emergent and stuff like that aren't uh fetching as higher price as a base rookie card you know this is an interesting thing for me especially because everyone knows how i have said that you know back in the the late 90s inserts were everything You know, yeah, in the yeah. key shack was like 50 bucks. You know, Jordan inserts were astronomical. Uh, and very rarely did you have a base card actually be worth anything at all. A Jordan base wouldn't be like five card. bucks. It'd be two bucks, you know, whereas now a Jordan base card is like, you know, anywhere from like 10 bucks to a couple of hundred bucks, depending on if it was graded or not, which is just astronomical. Um... But yeah, like this, this here, even though it's designated as a rookie card, technically speaking, is not actually a rookie card, despite the fact that it carries the rookie symbol, because this is not a base card. It is a rookie insert, and that is the thing that needs to be discussed. What do you think about this? I think it was really interesting when they introduced the stamp, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it was almost this push to go, hey, it's validating, just in case there's any doubt that that is the case that like the insert is less special than the base card kind of thing. Here's our official endorsement that the rookie card stamp exists to make it a rookie card. And like, I mean, like I say, I think to some people it will, but the pure one, the pure, pure rookie card is that base one, of course. So, um, and I, I think that's, that's another reason uh, how interesting the hobby is and how all those perceptions change over the years too. Like it's, you know, I, I, I completely remember that from the nineties too. And it was, mm -hmm. it was just completely, you know, the, how because it was how amazing the inserts were comparatively to the base set and like they were some really out there foiling techniques and that kind of thing you know crazy um so it, it's just interesting that it's kind of flipped a little bit and that's yeah. like the base is the most like clean you know uh crisp vanilla version and and most pure version of of what you're after for that rookie card yeah secondary level actually the last sharky what do you think Sharky gone. Sharky gone. Sharky. Sharky's gone. Yeah, Sharky's just jumped out. That's okay. He might jump. All right, out. that's fine. That's um, so what about parallels? Uh, this is a good so trap. <laughs> we when did they start? Uh, as far as they did start to exist in the nineties. They did uh, start they to guess, exist but, absolutely in the nineties. I was a kid, so we're talking about bias. Yeah. Uh, and, and I wasn't really intelligently like analyzing it or anything. But I mean, I remember those. You're like, oh, there's actually pretty special, that kind of thing. And, and now I feel like the whole economy is based on parallel. So yeah. Like it's, uh, and that and was going to be my point. That's why Prism Silvers. Yeah. Because still, that distinction still exists. So it's a pure absolutely. rookie. Absolutely. It's still a pure it's rookie. Point. It just happens to be a yeah. parallel because it's not an insert. It doesn't take up an insert spot per se, except I guess in Prism's 
in Prism's world, but I don't even know if that's technically true because in Prism, I believe your odds in a retail pack don't reflect that you'll get an insert or a Prism in every pack from memory. Wow. I could be wrong. Um, but when it comes down to it, if it's a parallel, it's still the base card. It just happens to be more special, basically. Um, which is which is why Prism cards in their Silver Prism are so damn good. I think Sharky... They, 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 did the whole thing. Yeah. they did the whole thing in, yeah, starting 2012, where they only had three colours then, I'm pretty sure. They had mm -hmm. the silver and the green and the gold. And it was it was just... It was, it was so minimal, it was special kind of thing. And they didn't have the R, the, the RC stamp back then either. Uh, that, that kind of jumped in the next year. Um, and it's still just quite amazing to see that. that I think it's, yeah, the more they add, the, the less special to some people they become. I know that. But it's, you know, it's also, I don't know it really how to describe it, except for when you go to show these off, you have nine of these in a row and they're all the same card, but they've got different parallels. And that is that. That is just to a lot of people that aesthetic is is so pleasing and so cool, you know, rather than different cards. Which duck you gone? Is he there? Get yeah, just asking in chat. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone wants to join the Discord and chat with chat with us via like text in Discord, uh, and maybe even be invited in. Have a chat, talk about stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah there you go. Except you weren't, Sharky. You're in another channel. <laughs> Type in now. <laughs> Just after I dragged him in. <laughs> Come back here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if people want to join the Discord, there is a, a server link uh, in the bottom of our VODs on YouTube. Um, so definitely follow those. But yeah, like uh, basically what I was saying... Uh, is that regardless of if it's a base card or a parallel, all of them are still technically a base card. Like, a parallel is still that base card. It just happens to be slightly shinier, you know. Um, an optic parallel to a rookie card is still that rookie card. It just happens to be, you know, a, a shorter print of that particular rookie card, which makes it even more special because it's a true rookie card. It's not, oh, this is like uh, an insert card from this person's rookie year, but I'm going to count it as a rookie card, which is why those cards don't fetch as much as a base, you know, like a, a base silver card. Because it's just, it's never going to be the same thing. It's an insert and it's not actually a rookie card. And I think even the emergent ones don't actually say that, hey, this is a rookie card. Yeah, exactly. I've even learned the, um, the other factor there too, a bit like the whole... It's it's on a level of like not super. I don't think superstition is the word for it, but it's like it's it's attaching meaning to to strange meaning to things that almost wasn't intended. And it was like when you have a numbered card that is like a jersey number, you mm -hmm. know, people say one of one for that kind of thing. People also attach a bit of value to a parallel color that may actually contrast or not contrast, actually complement really well with you know maybe it's the actual team color. You know that's a huge thing, and like that's 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 quite edge case. But like, say you got a green that is a Celtics card. And yeah, it's you know that stuff's amazing. Like people love that. Yeah, and I can see why. Like, if you get a green parallel of let's say the Carson Edwards hoops card, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it just that's... bleeds green, which is their yeah, whole it's... thing, which makes sense, right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I I I absolutely get that. Coming back to it, that is still. A rookie card because it is still a base rookie card yeah, it really. just happens to have like extra green on it because it's a shorter print it makes it more desirable for two reasons in this case number one because it's green and it's Carson Edwards who's Celtics but number two because it's a short print card um, mm -hmm. and and the thing that uh, Grayson from Cherry was you know pretty much talking about was exactly that the fact that the Shaq Bean team card a lot of people seem to think it's a rookie card, but it's not actually a true rookie card because it doesn't fit the definition of a rookie card. We're not looking to rewrite the definition. The definition is fine. The definition has been there for like 25, 30 years. You know, a, a base card is a rookie card and an insert is an insert card. Even if it's your rookie year, your insert in your rookie, your rookie year is a rookie insert. It is not a rookie card. 
So mm. it just happens to be the same year that you are a rookie. Great point. Great point. Um, do you want to put Sharky back into the break room? Mm-hmm. There he is. Oh, he's very low. I'll there, turn him Sharky? Up. He's back, oh, yeah. man. Cool. Um, can you hear me? We yeah, can. Perfect, perfect. A bit lower than before, but that's that's cool. Um, I don't know what's going Chesh, did you on want to this? talk about a little bit what happened today in basketball? <laughs> today? You mean Celtics getting a 4-0 sweep against yeah, the 76ers? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the meme you had about... Um, Homer's dad, like, walking in and turning around. <laughs> in the playoffs. Oh, <laughs> shit, it was so good. It was so good. <laughs> um, especially when you, like, you rewind to last year when, you know, the 76ers, you know, moved heaven and earth and, and actually just put up a fight and, and that kind of thing. And, of course, you then had a quiet buzzer beater in game seven to actually end it. But, you know, it's, I don't know, it just seemed really unceremonious and just like, oop. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I think 76ers are going to see a massive change in their lineup. Um, I love hearing what people think about this because it's almost like, are you on Team Embiid or Team <laughs> uh, Simmons? Like, who would you I move? Reckon I think? Simmons I reckon is going to move. Both oh, really? Just full shake up and do a new trust the process. Both of them leave and then yeah, Brett Brown's cool. fired as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the coach always seems to cop it from this kind of stuff too, for sure. It's yeah. Badly anyway. Yeah. I mean, that would be a massive shakeup. Si yeah. Like Simmons, we already know that Simmons is a great player, and Simmons oh, has yeah. been out because of injury, right? Yeah, too, but so, it's like how complimentary are they? Yeah, yeah. Simmons is going to come back to a fractured team, and he's just going to go, "No, nah. <laughs> like I don't want to borrow this." Like, there's yeah. nothing worse than coming back from yeah. injury to a team that's just like gotten themselves absolutely wiped out. Like, not even slightly. It was an absolute yeah, I mean, banger. Even even before, even the bubble, like, they they weren't even playing that well in the bubble. No. They were having, yeah, having big problems. You know, these issues aren't just from, you know, these last couple of weeks. Like, that team's been fractured since they yeah. lost last year. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I've been hearing things about it all. Yeah, <clears> it's like and... it, you see a different team when Embiid or uh, Simmons are the primary you know what i mean like it's Embiid demands so much attention as far as like dominating that kind of thing and it's like he was actually the reason l horford became a lot less effective and you see him in some games and it just worked and it's like oh this is what l horford of old was like and he's great and he just compliments well like he compliments well with simmons well there's another problem well. yeah the amount that they paid horford well, yeah yeah, it's a yeah. Lot. <laughs> and toby man like i love tobias harris but it's it goes to show, like, uh, my whole fascination of the game is that not everyone fits everywhere, and it really goes to show that, you know, they're making so much money, and, like, so much of their money is, is tied up in Harris and, and Horford. Not for long. <laughs> That's why, I mean, yeah, I mean, you get, like, look, Sim Simmons, out of the two, he's more the most likely one to go. Interesting. But I feel like both of them will leave. Who would you rather build around? Simmons. <laughs> Straight up. You're, why? Because he's Australian? Maybe. Because he's Australian? <laughs> yeah. Of course. Or well, it's like, is, is, it be, is it better to work around a, like, build around a generational talent point guard type thing? Like, I don't know. It's, you know, but at the same time... Look, it, Simmons, Simmons is, is good. Like, there's no, no taking away from the way he plays, but he could also be better. Now, I feel like if he goes to another team where he is either the number one or is playing with somebody who's dominant as the number one but can also lead him, yeah. then I think he'd become a lot better. That would be really cool, actually, like the type of scorer that is <laughs> that kind of thing. And, like, you know, because like, that's the thing, the way the Sixers not, play it is... Not like, that I think like, that the Celtics like, need it. But could you imagine if Simmons joined the Celtics? Like, so you had yeah, Simmons and Tatum, like, running the board. You, yeah. Could you imagine if Simmons joined the Lakers? Imagine if he joined the Bulls. Get rid I feel of, like he would, like... Get rid of Kuzma and... I would hate that team, but he would work there in a weird way. Like, I feel like LeBron 
LeBron can have a very polarizing effect on a lot of players, including yeah. my, fa- my favorite and, Isaiah Thomas, and well, even Derek Rose and, was weird. Like he just they did not gel. Like it's Ben Simmons big. and LeBron are already friends anyway. Ah, there you go. There you go. Is it the whole like agent thing? Like a lot of players, they everything like on the rumor wire is like. Well, I think it's agent, blah blah blah. But like, I, I think it's if you're like, it's also you know you're one of those bigger name players. Yeah. You hang out with a different crowd. Exactly. There's a lot of buddying up going on, and I of remember course. like. Did you watch the last dance? Yeah. <laughs> Did, didn't how, how everyone? Interesting all those stories were like the yeah. like the whole BJ Armstrong and the other dudes playing one dollar poker, and then Michael and like the big boys are playing. You know, yeah, like, big dollar like, poker. Like, if you, like, if oh, you we walk, just want to have fun. You guys want to actually like hustle people. If you walked like, into you know an NBA house that had two rooms, on one side you're going to have like LeBron, LeBron and Co. in there. Yeah, and then on the other side, you're gonna have the people that are like, are good, but they're not in yeah, that. Yeah, they, they haven't made the, and that kind of grosses me out a bit, but it just does exist. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. I, I maybe it comes from it's, a backing of like well, I've always hated it, the cultures where it's very exclusive and everything. Well, I find it all wanky, but you know, it's just, it's all it's schoolyard all over again. Exactly, and it, and and I think that's a greater thing to life, like. That always is that always exists. No matter if, no matter yeah, where you go, like it always you know, no matter where you are. And so yeah, that's that's my like gist of what I've got from LeBron's kind of always vibe, and and why some players kind of like you know are in in the club. It feels like and like kind of yeah. follow him around as well. Too. But like, yeah, I feel teams, like but, you know if you put in if you put Simmons with LeBron, I think he fits in that. I think he would. It'd be it'd be a very good team. Yeah, true, true. And you don't necessarily have to make Simmons a starter at the beginning. Yeah, you know, but you've also got that option because yeah. I'm pretty sure anybody like would be happy to go to the Lakers and play with the LeBron at this time, even if you have to sit on the bench for a little bit. If they have not yet, you know what I mean. Like I think if it's a player that hasn't, you know, hasn't played with him on the Cavs or something. Like I say, I don't think Isaiah yeah. Thomas wants to go back there, like that kind of thing. No, I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. And but, then um, obviously he's real good buddy buddies with J.R. Smith. Yeah, totally. And like, yeah, those kind of guys. Um, I was going to say, so superstar wise, where do you feel like someone like Dame is sitting on that scale these days? Do you think he's just like, I'm just going to be mates with my team and, you know, worry about winning kind no, of thing? I reckon he's in between that. Yeah, like it's not fully one or the other. I think if he wins a championship, put him up and put him up there. Yeah, because of the way that he plays and how many points just just him playing. Yeah, you know, and he's he really is a true clutch player. And I think I mean lately anyway, it has a couple of stories have come out of you know he he took a lot of choices based on I want to win here type thing and I want to care about my teammates and that kind of yeah. stuff. So. It seems like a cool dude. We were saying about um, Luca before too. Is like as far as I feel like. I mean, again, I can never attest to this because I've never met the people, but I, I tend to be really interested on like who I think is actually a genuinely like pretty cool person. Like you know, um, and and this even even extends to coaches, Chesh. Like I know I've heard a lot of stories about Brad Stevens just being a good person, and mm-hmm. I was always really excited for him and Haywood to um to team up again because they uh that was his college coach, and um. You know, it, it uh, is it Butler, yeah. Um, and, and I couldn't tell like there's the type of person, him, Nick Nurse, uh, Steve Kerr is on that list for me as well. Maybe like a George Carl from back in the day, but like the people you just want to have a beer with, you know, like they actually just not like seem like really nice people. So I don't know, but it's at the same time I find that for a lot of the time, like it, it it's really a lot of basketball is built on egos. It has to be. Oh yeah. You got to have self belief to do these kind of things, you know, for sure. So it's it's often like the intelligent, you know, uh, more more conscious player of other people will probably have a, you know, they'll be second guessing things, not flourish like they do. But you know, that's a whole bigger thing for sure. But yeah, it has the games today though far out. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like um, okay, so Luca was playing like what a bad ankle, um, and still yeah, exactly. pumped that's it out scary. like. So Lucas cards aren't gonna crash anytime soon, to be honest. Um, no, no, no. 
Somebody was saying something about Paul George's cards going up, so I like listed my silver fourteen fifteen prism on eBay. So we'll see how that that uh, <laughs> that auction goes. Someone uh, said, "Oh, there's a you know you know see those stats, and it feels like they're just pulling at the stat kind of you know it's a tenuous stat. Like you're like I don't know if there's any correlation to that, but apparently there's only a few people that have scored forty points or or something like that, and then won the game at the buzzer." And three of those times were against Paul George or something. It's like, oh, okay. oh. that's a weird correlation, but yeah, that's strange. Ooh. I don't know. What are my friends? Know, he, didn't, he, didn't play, he didn't play too well today. Hey, but yeah. Look, guys, I got to shoot. Yeah, no, yeah, no worries, man. Dinner time. But it's Best been time. great chatting. Yeah, thanks for coming along. We'll chat to you absolutely soon. Yeah, I mean, as, as per normal. Um, most likely chat with you guys next Monday, and I'll chat with you, Chesh, most likely each day until Monday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Radley. All right, and I'll catch you later. I'll pass the jam, Sam. Catch you, Sharky. See you, man. All right, Sharky out. Why? Why? So, Sam, take a look at general chat in the Discord. Yes. One of my friends just sent me that image. All right. I'm in rules, the general chat. Oh, there you go. In welcome rules. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Where'd that come from? Uh, it's in his collection. Doesn't know how much it's worth. <laughs> no, 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 no. I would never. Um, but what? he was just like, I don't, I don't understand, like, how much is this worth? Oh, no, no, I don't, I don't mean that way. Like, <laughs> no way, because it's, yeah. And, and, you know, me, me and you will always be that way. It's like, I'd, I'd never want to take advantage of anyone. Um, I, I meant that it's just like, all right, that's yeah. I looked at. I was now? like, you, 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 you've got a what now? <laughs> For those listening at home, it's a uh, ninety six, ninety seven tops, uh, Kobe Bryant rookie, uh, and it is graded at an eight point five, which isn't all right. amazing, but it's it's all right. Um, the other two look pretty fresh. Okay, great. Um, because this is this is what we do for friends, people. Uh, always look after your friends. So, if someone's got it graded, though, then they seem to know what's going on, I guess. No, he's had it for ages um, and doesn't know what it's worth. Someone else? Or... I, I assume he's got it, probably used to collect as a kid um, yeah. and maybe bought it when he was a kid or something. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can find him an 8.5 for reference, uh, which I can't. One thirty but... point. I'm pretty sure um, that an 8.5 would be about 500 bucks. Yeah. Nines, 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 nines. Yeah. Speaking of true rookie cards, that is that one. That yeah, one that is. A, that's when cops were doing parallels too, weren't they? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they were nuts. Uh, and then they've, they've got the one, actually, the one I've got, which is the stadium. So, just for people at home, I don't know if this will show up properly. But yeah. So, an 8.5 for that, Becca graded, big yes. I'm I'm gonna say probably about 5 to 5.30. Um, US or AUD? uh, AUD. Interesting. Yeah, I'm looking mine now too, actually. Because a nine, yeah. a nine is like nine hundred. Um, paid yeah. less than one hundred for all three. You what now? <laughs> you <laughs> you what? <laughs> Hold on, there's what are the three though? Is there three of them? There is. Uh, the other two aren't graded. Um, so oh. the other one is a fresh forced, fresh freshly forced. Yep. Um. It's a metal card, so it's probably got dings to the edges. The other one is also, uh, a, I wouldn't say a metal card, but it's, it looks like an upper deck uh, rookie review. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I see that one. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. That sounds like a bit of a bargain. Yeah. Because, I mean, a PSA 9, I'm seeing... Wake up, morning of the news. Oh, here we go. So, this is what Daryl did. So, story goes, he woke up on the morning of the news of Kobe's death. 
He looked on Trade Me for cards with buyouts and bought them. He just blindly bought them. He's like, I don't know what they're worth. I'm just going to buy them and keep them. (laughs) Wow. That's... I mean, to each their own, but... Exactly. I mean, there's a reason eBay uh, actually took a thing down after Kobe's death. They said they don't want to trade in any Kobe-related goods straight away. Do you remember that? Mm Mm-hmm. That was... And there was like... People cannot possibly be profiting off this person's death. Like it's it's in in the poorest taste type thing. So, yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's certainly a moral dilemma, you know. Like mm. for sure. Speaking of moral dilemmas, before we go, mm. current current situation of rookies. So let's let's start off by saying, uh, obviously, we know that um, the Jamarant is top of the game at this point. Um, I we know have an amazing career too. Yeah, have are the Gri- Grizzlies are still in the bubble? They haven't been kicked out yet, have they? I have not kept up today. I've not kept up with Grizzlies. <laughs> I just saw some game things today, um, but what do you got? I don't think they are. For whatever reason, I don't know. It's it's been very weird. I don't know. Uh, I've watched highlights and stuff, but I haven't been watching full games you know, like I usually do. Mm. Um, no, I believe they're gone. Oh, there we go. Um, so then you've got your two biggest rookies out, right? Yeah, so exactly. Zion's so cards are going to... Going... Well, Zion's cards are going to slip a little bit. Um, don't... I'm, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not going to give anyone financial mm-hmm. advice, but if it were me... And I say this because there's a legal requirement when you are talking about stuff like this because of the nature and the price of those cards that you need to disclaimer. Anyone who's not doing so is breaching Australian consumer um, consumer law um, by way of unconscious contact. Um, you can tell me where can find it. Yeah, unconscionable conduct, it should say. Um, mm-hmm. So if, if it were me at this point and I had some of those higher-end Zion cards, I'd absolutely hold. Um, if I had base prisms and silver prisms, I would keep and grade the silvers. I'd probably get rid of some of the base prisms just while the price is falling at the moment. Um, don't buy into Chronicles for Zion at this point. Just don't do it. Um, but there's heaps of other rookies in there anyway. Uh, I think that Jar Morant's prices are going to stabilize anyway. I don't think that we've seen the price drop like we have with Zion, and that's simply because we know that Zion's going to have some physical issues over the next six months to overcome. Um, and and Zion could absolutely be the next Shaq. He's a big guy. He's good. He's fast. You know, he can slam a jam. Um, and and it, it, there's every possibility that, you know, that we could be seeing, say, um, like a Shaq slash uh, a Shaq slash Larry Johnson, like it's you know exactly. But yeah, it's like right. A Shaq, a Shaq for this modern game, I guess. Yeah. You know, we thought he didn't have a jump shot, and then his first you know, his first game he hits four threes. Yeah, exactly. And we were like, wait yeah. a second, this big guy's shooting shooting points now. Who really knows? He shouldn't move like he does, but he does, and it's yeah. I I, I have no idea, and it's also. I've always been the the skeptic going, well, you know, I I don't know how someone, you know, keeps moving with that frame and doesn't injure themselves so so incredibly. But then again, Shaq had an amazing career and, you know, he was it was just he moved in ways he shouldn't have for, you know, seven, one, three plus uh, three hundred plus pounds. Like it was just amazing. So exactly. who really knows. Um here's here's gonna be my question to you, and I know that you don't have the answer, which is I wanted to ask Sharky about this. The new rookies coming into the NBA, how many of them actually signed to Panini yeah. and how many of them oh, actually signed I, to Leaf? I have no idea. And um, this, is, this is, you've probably dug into this a bit more than, uh, than I have. But yeah, this Lamello, is something over the last few years that I've... Lamello I've, signed I've to Leaf. Really? And he's the so big guy. Are uh, they're yeah. doing cards as well. And people want Lamello cards. Yeah, interesting. I need to see some of these. So, so yeah, I mean, you know, more competition is good, I guess. But yeah, this is, I mean, fairly new about leaf kind of thing. It's, well, it's huge. 
yeah so uh belief do like wrestling and stuff like that um ah, okay. but they also do a lot of the college basketball stuff uh yeah. which i believe is where the oh, lamello contract came from in the first place so as far as i'm aware i could be wrong but lamello is like yeah uh, apparently signed to leaf and i wonder how many of the new rookies are i know that the next rookie batch is uh, i mean they're fine but they're not like wowzers you know so yeah. i haven't i mean i used to keep up with a bit more about which the, what, what the new draft class are doing and that kind of thing but um yeah i mean lamello's the kind of poster on that one um but the, it feels like the zion draft class was the big one for a little while yeah um, there's going to be other okay ones but yeah kind yeah of, man, definitely the, less the hype thing, seriously it's like it's like the classic basketball there's the other companies that did it you know you can't have the brand on the jersey type thing and mm-hmm. immediately that just makes it feel pretty crappy yeah i mean current state of how leaf cards look that's essentially you know, uh, i you know even though that i can see here a scotty pippen auto like a, a, G, a Giannis auto like that kind of thing they're on a leaf card but it just feels really like budgetationy when yeah we, yeah when when you have to Photoshop out the actual brand name like it's it's cheap that kind of thing so I mean that happened years ago they... with a with one of the Kobe cards you know where Kobe's yeah, yeah. uniform had to be like you know the photoshopped to remove the the Lakers symbol from it yeah it's I don't know it's it just seems a bit like yeah not that genuine of course and that's that's where you know you've got to earn the right to have an nba kind of stamp on your thing and uh, i wonder if that comes along like the licensing improves in um i feel like maybe it could be like a you know def curry with under armor thing did you ever i don't think you may not have uh been uh having a look at the game when that was happening but under armor as a shoe shoe brand is is you know really flourished these days and i mean is I would say one of the big, <laughs> bigger kind of brands, but they... I, it's not a shoe brand? Do you, do you want to know how they actually started? Oh, they did... Um, Motocross. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Because I, many years ago, for a cosplay, I was looking at getting Under Armour uh, for my Bane cosplay that I was doing. Yeah. Because they were, they were doing Motocross Armour. Crazy. That's like, I only just recently learned that they were doing basketball shoes, and I was like, wait a second... Under yeah. Armour are doing shoes? That must have been like, because they did, uh, of course, American football stuff, and mm-hmm. yeah, that all leads into And literally, it, was, it says it on the box. It's Under Armour, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And then it was like compression wear was a big thing for a little while. Um, and then that's what they're known for. And then they started doing shoes. Mm-hmm. And Steph Curry was one of the first endorsed ath- athletes as far as on the up as well. And that was what really pushed it. So now, yeah, Under Armour are doing exceptionally well. But, um, who knows? Let's see what Leaf do. Yeah, and we'll see how the rest of the... They don't have to Photoshop out the logos anymore. No, yeah, and we'll see how basketball goes because it's, uh, yeah, it's a big shake-up. Like, a lot of the big rookies are Thanks, not the big dogs, which means other rookies may get their time to shine. Hopefully, Boston, like, you know, put their rookies out to, to shine a bit a bit more. Um, yeah, but and one in we'll particular. Well, yeah, yeah, hopefully Carson, but, you know. Like I, Carson's a long spec. He's a, a sh- he's pretty short at five eleven, you know. Yeah. But the fact that he has huge elevation when he needs to, yeah, he's That's tiny. Listing him in now, yeah, yeah. I thought because I mean places will list him at six foot, but yeah, it could be a five eleven more. No, he's it. yeah, it's five eleven, I believe. Um, I didn't make this comparison before, but I could see a bit of Nate Rob in there, like Nate Robinson. So mm. um, one of my favorite players is a Seattle guy and um, just short in stature, but like infinite in heart kind of thing. well that's that's what i was saying about like he kind of reminds me he's got that shooting of jason kidd from back in the day oh, you really? know when it's just yeah. like doing these like great like hot three-pointers um hmm. and i was watching a reel recently and it was just carson like just hammering three-pointers just getting like the ball passed from and just a hot a hot toss straight into the basket it's like holy shit dude like you're just yeah. firing off these like zero reaction shots just... And that's, I mean, that's that's where the game is these days, like scoring point guards. What, thing. what yeah. happened to basketball? It used to be about oh, the man. slammer jam, and now it's all like, no, like, yeah. you're shooters, man. You've got to be, 
you've got to be able to do everything, but shooting is your most important value these days. Like, totally. and I, I thought that would surprise you. And it's also like kids can grow up going, oh, I'm only, I might only ever be six foot one. Like I can look like, I can play like Steph Curry, whereas it's kind of going, oh, I can't really aspire to be Shaq, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. And that's huge. And like apparently now kids games, it's, you've got these kids that shooting sleeves and they're trying to shoot from half court. It's like, yeah, that's kind of where it's at. And, you know, uh, scoring point guards and everything. But I don't know, like you get this, there's a few players that seems like they're a little bit left behind in the loop. They're still good, but it's like, it's not what the game's about. Like you, an Andre Drummond is, you know, he's just an old school center and he'll still gobble up 20 rebounds, you know, given the chance. But, you know, you got to have a jump shot these days, pretty much base baseline. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. We should call it uh, and go and have respective dinners. So thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us, uh, for talking the ball with us. Again, if you want to catch Sam, Sam, where can the peoples catch you? Burr. You can find me on the Instas and the Twitters at Pass the Jam Sam. Excellent. And for myself, you can catch me at Cheshire Chesh Breaks. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Just search for Chesh Breaks. And of course, here on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Chesh Breaks. Uh, don't forget, you can join the Discord. We don't mind. We will have you in a general channel and we will talk to you uh, about stuff. And you can post cool pictures and stuff as long as it's just not problematic. Because if it is, I'll just ban you straight up and I don't care because yep. it's my Discord, my rules. <laughs> um, and spec with us, like, join us on this, like, weird journey. Uh, I think the, the YouTube, you know, remember to hit that subscribe button, because we need you to. We're up to, like, 10 subscribers now, so, you know, hey. getting, like, you know, 30 views a vid, which is uh, actually impressive, considering we're so new. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, just uh, keep cracking packs. Yeah, we'll catch you next Monday night, I guess. Yeah, yeah. See you later, everyone. Bye! Hey.